is your time to shine. It's time to put everything you've learned into your final renderings. So we are going to learn how to do interior and exterior renderings. Both will be required in your final assignment. So let's get started. The next part we're going to get into is the actual exterior renderings. So the first thing we need to do is we need to decide what kind of view do we want to see of our project. Again, I'm not a big proponent of garage doors on the front of houses, so I'm going to try to focus my view to where the garage door is not a big element in this view. So to create a camera view, I come up here to my 3D view and I go to camera and I want a place where I can kind of see this edge of my house here. So for now, I'm going to do something like this. Once I get into this view, I can make adjustments. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to turn it a little bit more to where it's not focusing as much on the garage. And then I want to turn it to where it kind of has a view like this. So I can make whatever adjustments I want. So once I do that, the other thing is I don't like to have a lot of dead space in my views. And I like to keep my views to where they are more um, long in this direction and shorter in this direction. They just kind of tend to work a little bit better. Right here, um, I may go ahead and stretch this out a little bit because I want to pick up that sidewalk potentially. That may cause me some headaches. I may have to come in and change that. And over here, since I'm not really showing anything, I don't want to have a lot of space there. The other thing I don't like is I don't like a lot of dead space down here. And I don't like a lot of space up here. Also, I do not like things to look really distorted. The view needs to be a natural looking view. This is kind of nice. You can see the stairs in here, so it kind of gives a nice view there. So once I get this view set, I want to come over here and I want to rename it so that I can always go right back to it. So I'm going to call this my front view. So I've got that one kind of set for now. It's good to go. I'm going to go back to my site plan. And on this one, I think I want to do a view kind of coming over here. So I'm going to go to camera and I'm going to set a view kind of like this. And again, I would adjust it and get it the way that I want it. And I don't particularly like the way that it's setting. So I'm going to turn this a little, little bit more kind of like that. Get rid of some of this dead space here some of the dead space here, a little bit of dead space here, and some dead space there. And then I'm going to save this one as my back view. So once I get those set, then it's real easy for me to go back and start working on putting in the stuff I want. Typically, we like to go in and do landscape for the whole piece of property, etc. But we're focusing on our rendering, so we're just going to worry about the areas because of our limited amount of time. So I want to close this one because I only want to, and I'm going to close my site plan, because I only want to have my floor plan and this view here. If I type in WT, you'll see it's bringing up both my floor plan which I can still see my site stuff on here, and my 3D view. So this is a nice way to work, to be able to add things where you want them to be. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to add some plants into here, like around the front of the house here. So I'm going to go to my massing and site, and I'm going to go to site component, and I'm going to go to load family. I'm going to come down here to planting and you'll see I have some shrubs so that's where I'm going to start. Now when I hit open over here if I come and I look I have lots of different types of shrubs and it tells me like how big they are and tells me what they are. So the first thing I need to do is I want to change this to realistic so that I can actually see what I'm truly looking at. 
So I'm going to come in here in my plan view and I'm going to start placing some shrubbery. And as I do this, it's going to appear in my drawing. If I go and I look at this, like in a straight view, these are going to be floating because remember we dropped everything down. So I need to select all of these. And I believe out here at this corner, I was at about between 9 inches and 10 inches. So I'm going to offset these negative 10 inches so that they are actually in the ground. So you've got to be aware of that when you're starting to place things like this in there. So I can see that that looks pretty good. Um, maybe this one I really want it to be a different kind. I want it to be a boxwood. See it has kind of a different shape and such to it. So I might pick some other ones so I can add all the different types of shrubbery I want. Once I kind of get them placed in here, I could just grab all, a whole bunch of these and do like my copy. And I could place them over here very quickly. And I could do copy and I could place some more over here. Again, that looks a little awkward, so I'm going to delete some of them out. And then again, I would probably want to put some over here. So maybe in this case, I grab these and I do a mirror. So now I have some over here. So maybe back here, really, instead of this shrub and this shrub, I really want to put a tree in here. So again, I'm going to go to my site component load family and this time I'm going to pick some trees so here I have trees and I like Japanese maple and that's kind of a medium sized tree it's about 10 foot tall so I'm going to put that right here in the corner so that looks pretty nice so back here I have a couple of things that, that I can do. One, I need to kind of fill this in because otherwise it's really going to just drop the earth off right here and that's not going to look good. So I can come in here with my site component and I can pick some more of these trees and in this case I'm going to pick some that are a little bit bigger. I'm going to pick like one like that and maybe one like that and maybe one like that. Now I've kind of filled this in. I still have some stuff going on back here, but we'll work on that here in a minute. So the other thing I need to do is I need to have a vehicle in here. Now Revit only has one vehicle, and if I go to Load Family, and I back up here, and I go to Entourage, you'll see I have a Volkswagen Beetle and it's bright yellow. So I'm going to place that probably somewhere like right here. So as I'm building in my plan view, I'm building in my 3D view. So let's see what else we have in here. Um, we have some males and females, so maybe we want to add a female. If I say open, because we do want some people, um, I have Cynthia, Florence, Lisa, Tina, and Yin Yin. So I'm going to put Lisa, and I'm going to put her right here going in the house, or coming out of the house. And then I'm going to add Yin Yin, and I'm going to put her out here on the sidewalk. And I can rotate them. So like once I get her in there, I can use my rotate and I could put her to where she's kind of looking a little bit different. So again, that's kind of a, a nice feature there. So you can add some people in there. There are other things you can go out there and get. You can get dogs, you can get benches, you can get fountains, all kinds of things. Like I would probably want to put something right in here. So I think I'm gonna add another tree just for simplicity's sake. 
and I don't want it to be too tall so I'm gonna put a maple tree in there so I have a lot of empty dead space down here so I'm gonna take this and pull this up and I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to move this tree so that kind of fills in over here a little bit and I still would probably come in and add some more shrubbery and continue probably around this whole thing to kind of make it look a little better and again try not to like plant your put your plants where they're completely perfectly in line um, it just gives it a better feel if it's not now again I want to make sure that everything has been dropped down so it's not floating things like that so like I need to make sure that she's actually standing on that so I just need to check to make sure that everybody's where they're supposed to be and that the car is sitting on the asphalt the next thing I need to do after I've created my view and added some objects into it is I need to start playing with um, the light and what's going on with this couple of things that I do not want to see on your houses one is this purple brick you can go in and change that right here on the exterior material in this particular case on this but on your say if you're using the brick or whatever go here to appearance go in here and click on burgundy and I'm going to change that to a brown Okay, so now that actually fits better with this house. The other thing is these windows, if you use just the regular windows, they come out very orange. So we're gonna go in here and we're going to change the exterior and interior trim material. Right now it is a um, birch, so it comes out very yellowish or orangish. So, if we go to like say a walnut that's gonna make it a darker and I'm gonna take the stain off of it and I'm gonna say apply and I'm gonna say okay and then I want to do the same for the interior okay I already did that which is good sash material I need to change that to also be the walnut and take the stain off of it. So now I have windows that match a little bit better. This piece on here, I would probably go in and change it too, but I'm not going to spend time doing that and I don't know that I would go with green shutters on the outside, but again. So you can go in and you can modify any of this stuff. So now we are ready to start our rendering process and setting up our site to make the outside daylighting correct, etc. So if we go to render, the first thing up here says render and we want to leave it for now on draft because we want to make it do it quickly. It'll be a very rough one, but it'll give us an idea. We always want to set it to printer for doing renderings. And then we want to change our lighting scheme. Since we're doing exterior only, we want to do exterior sun and artificial. If I was doing interior, I would do sun and artificial. I always do both, even though like in this case, I don't have any light fixtures out here. Um, I would still do that. The next part is the sun setting. This is kind of cool. So you want to set it for still because we're doing a still image. And I usually pick summer because I like to have be able to play with the sun a lot and the sun is a lot more shadowy in the summer and then for his location I can pick any location in the world that I want so if I put in Springfield Missouri and do a search and say okay you'll see now it's located in Springfield the other thing is because I picked summer solstice, it picked the 21st, which is the first day of spring or summer. So I'm going to leave that there. And then I like to play around with the times of day. I usually use either 10 o'clock in the morning because it gives good shadowing or I pick two o'clock in the afternoon. We want to take that check mark out of there and I want to say apply and okay and you notice when I did that that the rendering kind of changed even just with the regular 
realistic view. So if, say, I wanted to go back and I wanted to change this to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, hit apply, you'll see it's a little bit darker because of the way the sun is coming. So I'm going to put it back at 10 a.m. Then if I have artificial lights, this is where I would go in and modify those. And I'm not going to do that today, but it is, does talk about it in your instructions. So right now, if I leave this with just the basic setup and I do render, it shouldn't take it very long. And it, it looks pretty good. I'm kind of getting some weird shadowing here, so I may want to change the time of day. This is what we try to avoid, okay? Because our property only goes out so far. This is what we call the horizon line. Basically, when you look out on a piece of property, you see where the land and the sky come together. That's what's happening here. But our land stopped at 200. So to get this to come out here, we would have to go miles and miles and miles. So the best thing to do in this case is to do your own background. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get something that has maybe some um, trees in the background and sky. So I'm going to type in trees and sky background. You may have to play around with this a little bit. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, depending on what you're trying to pick. Um, like something like this might work really well because it would pick up the trees back here possibly or maybe something like this the other thing I got to do is I got to make sure I kind of match the tree colors to my tree colors I don't want something that's kind of weird in there I like this one. we're gonna try this one again I want to make sure it's a good quality image I'm gonna do save image as and I'm gonna call it tree and sky save so what I can do is I can come in here and instead of picking one of the ones that comes with it, I can pick image. And then I can go find that image that I just saved. And I can say open. And I can say OK. Now I have to re-render. And that really doesn't look too bad. Kind of filled in back here, looks OK. Kind of added some more trees back in here, looks OK. Look, the grass might look a little weird, so I might want to switch to a different grass because we kind of got something going on back over here that I don't particularly like. So I can play around with different images. Um, maybe I want to go to one that's more just the sky itself. So let's go with sky. Let's go with something crazy, see what it does. See how it changes the entire look? Um, if I did this, like say, at about a sunset time of day or something, that might actually work. Probably what I need to do over here on this, because I've got this space right here, is I would probably get rid of that space. That way it wouldn't be quite as noticeable. That looks a little bit better. So again, you can do lots of different, um, the key things I'm going to be looking for are trees, people. So again, um, play around with it, have fun with it, do whatever you want to do. So now, say this is exactly how I want it. Now I'm going to change this from draft to best. I'm going to set my DPI to 600 and I'm going to leave everything else the same and then I'm going to close this. Early on, you should have set up a 360 Autodesk 360 account. So if you did, that's great. If not, and for some reason you can't, you can, can use mine. But you're going to render in the cloud. You do not want to render to your own computer or to um, the school computer because it just won't happen. So I'm going to hit continue at this point. And here, I'm going to stay with still image and it will let me do one at a time. I can get one started and then go work on the other one and send it. So I can have two going at the same time, but I can only do one at one time. And I want to set this to final. 
and I want to use 16 megapixel. Again, you're not paying for this. This is free for students, um, so keep that in mind. So once I do that, I'm going to hit render. And then I can continue to work. And right up here, it's actually processing. So I can go to view rendering process, and it's going to take me to where this is going on, and I can see it happen. There was one step I forgot to mention. There's a place where you can check mark that it will send you an email when it is completed, um, but we'll come back to that. So then I would just continue on and do the rest of my renderings. Um, in this case, it's only two. Okay, so my rendering took about 10 minutes to do, so that wasn't too bad. So once I get my rendering, I see lots of things that are wrong with it. The first thing I see is that Yin Yin over here is not on the sidewalk, and I can tell that by the shadow. I can tell the same with the car. It's not on the pavement. This tree is not on the ground. These are not on the ground, so I need to look for those types of things. The other thing, um, this stripe across here actually turned out not to be too bad of a color. I probably would have went in, uh, or I probably would go in, and I would change this door to match the rest of the windows. I like the nice color on those. I definitely would go in and change the color of these shutters. I would probably make them like the same color as the windows, or maybe pick up a yellow in here or something like that. Over here, again, this is too much of a distinct line. I could very easily take care of this by coming in and putting some shrubbery over here that would hide that. This one over here doesn't bother me too much, but again, I might just put some shrubbery in over here to make this look a little bit better. One of the easy ways to do this is to go in on your elevations, and I can see right here that this tree is completely floating up here. Um, I need to move her down to where she's on the sidewalk. Um, the car, I moved it down already from the other elevation. Um, this tree, even though I don't see the base of it, it needs to come down. These need to come down. So again, I would look at my 3D view and now pay more attention to see if I've got things moved. And select this door and make those changes and etc. So now over here, to fix this problem, I added a bunch of shrubbery over here. Now it kind of hides that line back there. So now I would re-render. Okay, so I went in on the rendering and I lowered the car down and I lowered Yin Yin down and I lowered the tree down. I didn't bother lowering all the bushes down or changing the colors like I talked about, but I did add some shrubbery back here in the back which helped with that distinct line. And I would probably do the same thing over here, add some shrubbery along here just to kind of hide that line. So that is kind of what the plan is for your exterior drawings. You're gonna do a front rendering and a rear rendering. So this concludes the exterior rendering portion. In the next video, we're going to look at the interior renderings.